Humanity's journey into space has always been a race against time and distance. For over half a century, we've relied on chemical rockets, the workhorses that took us to the moon and sent probes to distant planets. But these engines have hit a wall. Their efficiency, a metric called specific impulse, has peaked. A journey to Mars is a grueling nine-month slog. A mission to Neptune takes decades. To truly explore our cosmic neighborhood, we need something fundamentally different, something revolutionary. That revolution might just be brewing inside a spinning chamber of liquid uranium. This is the story of the Centrifugal Nuclear Rocket, or CNTR, a concept that promises to cut the trip to Mars down to just a few months and open up the entire solar system. To understand why the CNTR is such a leap, we first have to talk about efficiency. The specific impulse, or ISP, of a typical chemical rocket is around 450 seconds. This means it can generate one pound of thrust from one pound of propellant for 450 seconds. The idea of using nuclear power isn't new. From 1955 to 1973, the U.S. invested heavily in projects like Rover and Nerva, developing solid-core nuclear thermal rockets. These engines used a solid nuclear reactor to heat a propellant like hydrogen, achieving a specific impulse of around 900 seconds. They effectively doubled the efficiency of chemical rockets, a huge step forward. But they had a critical limitation, the melting point of their solid fuel. You can only heat the propellant to the temperature that the reactor itself can withstand before it melts. The centrifugal nuclear rocket represents the next evolutionary leap. It's a liquid core design that completely bypasses this limitation. By using liquid nuclear fuel, the CNTR is designed to heat propellant up to a staggering 5,000 Kelvin. This could result in a specific impulse of up to 1,800 seconds. That's double the efficiency of the best solid core nuclear designs and a full four times the efficiency of the chemical rockets we use today. This isn't just an incremental improvement, it's a paradigm shift. A round trip mission to Mars could be slashed from nearly three years to as little as 420 days. So how does this incredible machine work? At its heart, the CNTR is built around a beautifully simple principle executed with immense engineering complexity. Instead of solid fuel rods, the CNTR uses liquid nuclear fuel, like molten metallic uranium contained within a series of rapidly rotating cylinders called centrifugal fuel elements, or CFEs. Here's the process, step by step. First, these cylinders are spun at incredibly high speeds, maybe up to 7,500 revolutions per minute. This intense rotation generates a powerful centrifugal force that pins the dense, molten uranium against the inner wall of the cylinder, forming a stable, liquid liner. This is how the fuel is contained. Second, a propellant, usually liquid hydrogen for maximum performance, is pumped from its tanks. On its way to the core, it's used to cool the engine's nozzle and other structures. This is called regenerative cooling. It keeps the engine from melting while also preheating the hydrogen. Third, and this is the magic of the design, the now gaseous hydrogen is directed to the outside of the rotating cylinders. It flows inward through a specially designed porous wall. This wall is a technological marvel. It has to be porous enough to let the light hydrogen gas pass through, but strong and impermeable enough to hold back the much denser liquid uranium which is being forced against it by thousands of Gs of centrifugal force. As the hydrogen bubbles through this intensely hot layer of molten uranium, it's directly heated to extreme temperatures, far hotter than any solid material could possibly withstand. Finally, this superheated hydrogen gas, now a high-pressure plasma, exits the liquid fuel into an open channel at the center of each cylinder. From there, it's all collected and blasted out through a conventional rocket nozzle, generating immense thrust. This bubble-through reactor design is the key. Because the engine's operating temperature is no longer limited by the melting point of solid materials, 
It can achieve exhaust temperatures and a specific impulse that were previously unthinkable. The hottest part of the engine, the liquid uranium itself, only ever touches the gaseous propellant, not the solid walls, which are kept relatively cool by the inflowing hydrogen. While this sounds like science fiction, the idea has a long history. The theoretical groundwork for liquid core nuclear rockets was laid as early as the 1950s and 60s, right alongside the development of the solid core Nerva engines. Scientists back then understood the limitations of solid fuel and saw a liquid core as the logical next step. They even proposed the same bubble-through concept that underpins the modern CNTR. So why didn't we build one back then? The simple answer is that the technical challenges were just too great. The materials, science, computer modeling, and manufacturing techniques of the space race era weren't up to the task of taming the extreme environment inside a liquid nuclear rocket. Containing the corrosive molten fuel and ensuring the stability of a spinning drum of radioactive material were formidable hurdles. When funding for advanced propulsion research dried up and the NERVA program was canceled in 1973, these visionary concepts were put on the shelf. Today, however, researchers are dusting off those old plans, armed with decades of advances. Supercomputers can model the complex physics inside the core, new materials can withstand the harsh conditions, and advanced manufacturing can create the intricate components required. Institutions like Ohio State University and the University of Alabama in Huntsville, with support from NASA, are now working to turn that 60-year-old vision into a reality. Of course, the journey from concept to a working engine is a gauntlet of innovation. The single greatest challenge remains the rotating cylinder wall. It needs to let hydrogen in, but keep liquid uranium from getting out. Researchers are experimenting with advanced materials like silicon carbide composites, coated with other ceramics like zirconium carbide, that can resist the corrosive, high-temperature uranium. Another major hurdle is mastering the heat transfer. The efficiency of the engine depends on how quickly the hydrogen bubbles can absorb heat as they pass through the liquid uranium. This is an incredibly complex two-phase flow problem, and it requires sophisticated computer simulations to get right. Scientists are also looking at advanced fuels. Instead of pure liquid uranium, they are exploring uranium carbide, which has a higher melting point. Even more advanced are ternary carbides, mixing uranium, zirconium, and niobium carbides to create materials with extremely high melting points and greater resistance to the corrosive hydrogen. Then there's the issue of stability. A spinning drum of molten radioactive metal is not an easy thing to control. Engineers must design systems to prevent dangerous vibrations or 